there are a few highly rated uh, third party uh, groups that conduct polls and surveys. Some of the most common ones that you may have seen on the news are like Pew National Research Center or um, or the Gallup polls. Um, the, these are groups of people that go out and their job is to collect statistics in um, good ways. When uh, big polls like this announce their results, they're very, very careful about the wording. Let's talk. look at a couple of ways that they may talk about this. They may say something like, a sample of U.S. voters show candidate A has a 72% approval rating. So here what they're doing is they're telling you what the result of the sample is. They're giving us the statistic. If they want to use this as an estimate for a parameter, so for example, if they wanted to change the wording, they might say something like, U.S. voters give candidate A a 72% approval, plus or minus 3%. In this case, what they're doing is they're using our statistic that was gathered from a sample, and they're acknowledging that there is some variability within the result. This here, this plus or minus 3% is what we call a margin of error. And the reason that we have margins of error in our in any type of poll that we gather is because of something that we call just natural sampling variability. Even in the best designed calculation of a sample, if you talk to three people who have a certain opinion and then you talk to three other people, they just naturally might have different opinions. And this is true even on a scale of, you know, 10,000 people. And then you talk to another 10,000 people, for example. Um, you're going to get different people and there's just by nature of having a, a different grouping there might be some variability in this. This margin of error is statistically calculated. It's gonna involve stuff that if you take a statistics class, you'd learn when or what that percentage would be. It's based on how many people you interviewed compared to the big population that you're trying to find out about and a number of other factors. But seeing something like this is very common. Uh, another way that you may see this written is as a range of values, and we call this a confidence interval. A confidence interval is giving us the variability that's predicted here with my uh, with my statistic. So if I'm plus or minus 3%, that means on the low end, I could subtract 3% from here and get 69%, or I could add three on the upper end and get 75%. So somewhere in here, I'm expecting the actual um, voting approval rate to lie. I might, with one sample, I might get 69%. With another one, I might get 74%. But somewhere in here, we tend to have that value that I'm interested in, uh, in calculating. I'm able to estimate the parameter um, fairly well within this range. Uh, a lot of times, you'll see this written just um, something like this, where you have 69% on the lower end, 75% on the upper end within parentheses. So this would be a confidence interval, and this has to deal with a plus or minus 3% margin of error. And in the middle of that, we have our best guess, which is the result of the sample that we actually took. So is this 100%? We're guaranteed that this is going to be the approval rating. Not really, but we're this level of confidence, a lot of times uh, we have is, is given or as part of what we're expecting and how we develop what that margin of error is. The general rule is that it's a 95% confidence interval. And basically what this means is 
if I were to conduct the survey over and over and over uh, with different groupings, 95% of the time, um, I would get an approval rating that lies be between these values. So that's essentially what, um, what this number here is telling us. Um, mathematically, we almost always use 95% confidence intervals. Um, that's kind of the generic accepted. Sometimes we only maybe want care about 90% confidence. Sometimes if it's very, very important that we're as close to estimates as, as possible, like if you're doing something life or death with medical accuracy, for example, you might want to have a 99% um, con confidence in your interval with a smaller margin of error that's associated with that. So again, these numbers are all going to be based on how big your sample is and how many people you talk to how many, how big the population is that you're looking at. There's a whole uh, series of things that go into the formula that we're not really going to look at. What we are after here um, in our statistical processes unit is understanding what this margin of error is, why we have it because of this natural sampling variability, because every group you choose is naturally going to be a little bit different. And we try to control that um, with good statistical practices and reporting a margin of error, which can be written as a confidence interval for a high level of confidence that this value that we're looking for, that the actual parameter is going to lie within this range. Um, 